Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla and today I'm going to talk about how I went about health insurance as a self-employed individual. As I've mentioned in just about every video that I've uploaded since this life change, I am now self-employed, so I apologize if you've heard that a million times, but in case this is the first video that you're watching of mine, I am now self-employed. I've never been fully self-employed in my life, so obviously this was a big change for me, and honestly, my largest concern with becoming self-employed was health insurance, and I will talk about why. Most of y'all watching this live in the US, and y'all know how healthcare is, and unfortunately, it it sucks. Health insurance, the cost of healthcare, and the healthcare system is definitely broken here in the US, and that is very unfortunate because of how developed we are as a country, but it kind of just is what it is. And for a lot of people, health insurance isn't something that they necessarily would stress about because they're like, oh, I never go to the doctor, or I don't have any prescriptions, it's not a concern for me. But that is not the case for me, unfortunately. Overall, I am a healthy individual, but a few years ago, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And with Crohn's disease, I have to take medication or I choose to take medication that is very expensive. And also because I have Crohn's disease, I have to visit my doctors on a regular basis. Now at this point, I am in remission, which is beautiful. I am very grateful to be able to say that and just very grateful to have my life be what it is right now as far as my health goes because at one point I was very, very sick and just struggling to, to live. And the reason that I went into remission and have remained in remission is because of this very expensive medication. But as I was saying, I do have to visit the doctor more frequently than other people would have to. So I go to like a GI doctor, a colorectal surgeon, and at this point, since I am in remission, I could probably get away with visiting those doctors once per year just to keep up with my prescription and make sure everything is all good. Also, before I left my job, I had a colonoscopy in, it was in April, and I did that intentionally because I knew that I was going to be leaving my job, so I was like, let me go ahead and get that out the way. If there's anything bad, like if I get any negative results from my colonoscopy, then I will have to reconsider leaving my job, but luckily everything was all clear from my colonoscopy, which is amazing. Now, before becoming self-employed, I, for like six years, I had really good health insurance from both of my employers. It was always Blue Cross Blue Shield, which in Georgia, when you have Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can basically see any doctor because everybody accepts Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, so I always was able to be seen by whoever. I also had a PPO plan from both of my jobs, which means that you can go to a specialist doctor without a referral. So I could just call up a GI and go and see them that week without having to go to a primary care doctor to be referred and then go to the specialist. I also always had a low deductible health plan at my previous job before the last one, it was, I think my deductible was $0. And then at my most recent job, my deductible, I think at one point was zero, but then it became a deductible of 500. So always very low, but also my healthcare was covered by the job. So that was really beneficial. Like I was able to have a really expensive plan, but have the bulk of it covered by the employer. Now, when you become self-employed, there are a few options that you can choose from in order to get healthcare coverage. Obviously you don't have to, you can choose to be uninsured, which obviously I'm not gonna do that. Another option is COBRA. So I'm gonna talk about that first because that, that was available to me and I decided not to go with COBRA because it is very, very expensive. So let me show you those numbers. If I wanted to keep the same plan that I had with my employer, just the medical side of it, the medical coverage, I would have to pay $766.70 per month. A lot of money. So obviously I'm not doing that. If I wanted to keep the dental insurance that I had from my previous employer, I would have had to pay $39.85. Now for the dental coverage, that's not too bad, but ultimately I decided not to go with Cobra for the dental coverage and go through healthcare.gov instead for the both of them. So that's the third option is healthcare.gov. There are some states where you can like find coverage through the state. Um, honestly, it was just kind of confusing. I don't know if Georgia has that. I think they do. From my understanding, there are different coverage options available by state, but I ultimately decided to go with healthcare.gov because it was pretty straightforward. And I just knew that by going through healthcare.gov, it was gonna be like a legitimate plan and like everything would, would be fine, you know? 
In order to qualify for a plan through healthcare.gov in the middle of the year, like I did, or I guess it was May, June time, you have to have a qualifying life change. So that would be losing your job or switching jobs, getting married, getting divorced, having a child, things like that. So typically you can't just sign up in the middle of the year without one of those life-changing events, but otherwise they have open enrollment, which starts at some point in November. So when you first visit healthcare.gov and you want to shop around for some plans, you have to answer a few questions and it's pretty straightforward like you have to say what life-changing event has happened obviously for me it was a change in jobs so I answered with that and then I did qualify from there I was able to put in a little bit of information about myself like how often I would be going to the doctors um, I got to put in which doctors I wanted coverage for so that was really important to me because I wanted to be able to see the same doctors that I've been going to and make sure that they're in network the other thing that you put in is any medications that you're on and ideally you would find a plan that covers those medications. So back in 2021, when I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, I was put on a medication called Humira. And this is the one that is very, very expensive. It's like $7,000 per month. I know that I could see like how much it cost me for a full year of having Humira without insurance. And it was over $85,000. It's absolutely disgusting. It is crazy to me. Obviously, I didn't pay $85,000 at the time. I was paying like $5 per month, but just the fact that something costs that much for like for me to feel okay is yeah, it's just crazy. Um, but that's what I was on for the longest. But then more recently, I think it was in April, even when I had my old plan, I got a notification from my pharmacy that they were no longer carrying that. Because what happened is for the longest time, Humira had all these patents on whatever is in their medication and like how they, I don't know, it, however it works with medication. It's very corrupt system, obviously. But for a very long time, like two decades, I think Humira came out in like 2001 or something like that. Other pharmaceuticals were not able to create generics or like biosimilars to Humira until 2023, I believe. I think the first one may have come out in like 2022, but it didn't become available in the States until 2023 from my understanding. And then come April of 2024, they were like, okay, these biosimilar products are widely available. So now we're not going to cover Humira, which is very frustrating because this is, you know, it's a biosimilar medication, but it's still a switch. So I've, I was doing great on Humira, but then I had to switch over to Hiramaz because my pharmacy would no longer be carrying Humira or covering Humira, whatever they said. So I had to switch to Hiramaz, which this happened on my previous insurance plan and I started that medication by the time I left my job. So as far as the medication goes that I put into like what I wanted covered, I put in the both of them just to see like what would be covered. And honestly, Hiramaz is very new. So that was showing as like not covered on all these plans, but it's a biosimilar, which is a cheaper product than Humira. So if anything was saying, okay, this covers Humira, then I, I was like, okay, then Hiramaz is probably good, you know? Hopefully that makes sense. Something else that you fill out on healthcare.gov is your expected income or something along those. I can't even remember, honestly, and I can't go back and see what I did. But I know at some point I typed in like a low income that I would be earning for the rest of the year. I think I did like 24,000 total. And if they see that you have a low income or a lower income, they may offer you a tax credit. And so for me at first, I was like, oh no, I don't want the tax credit whatsoever. I will just pay what I need to pay because I don't want to have to like, oh, I thought there would be fees involved. But then the more I did some research, I realized that that's not the case. And I was like, okay, instead I'm gonna take the full tax credit, pay less for my insurance now, put that money into savings, and then come tax time, I will pay for the tax credit if I have to pay it back. So based off of the information that I entered, I qualified for a $346 monthly tax credit. So I took the full thing. You can also opt to take a partial tax credit or opt to take none of it and just pay in full. And at the time I had a sinking fund labeled for beauty purchases. And instead of me using that for beauty purchases, I decided to instead use that money to just keep it in my savings 
and save that come tax time for if I do need to pay it back. So once you enter in all of that information, you will elect the tax credit that you want to take, if any. I put in my doctors, put in my medications, and I started the search. And there's like tons of them that will come up. And unfortunately, when you look through all of these, they're all basically trash, but you just gotta work with what you get. With your search results, you can also filter things down. So I started filtering, cause I had like, I don't know, a list of maybe 20 plus options, 25 plus options. So I wanted to only see the plans available to me that were under a certain amount. So I didn't wanna have to pay over like $500 total, like if we included the tax credit, maybe, I think I might've even done 600. I was like max, 600 altogether. And then obviously with the tax credit, it would be $346 less that I would be paying. So I think I started by narrowing it down by price. And then of course I did filter to make sure that all of my doctors were included. Like it, you'll see on each plan, a list of the doctors that you put in. And if they're not in network, you'll see a, a big X, a red X. So any of those I wanted to be out of there. So I wanted all of my doctors to be covered and in network. And then my medication, I wanted a green check mark next to my medication. Anything with X's in it, I just didn't even look at. Now at first I was considering a plan with Ambetter because my doctors were in network with them. It seems like my medication would have been covered, but ultimately I decided I really just wanna stay with Blue Cross Blue Shield because that's who I've been with for like the bulk of my adult life. And also I just know that here in Georgia, almost everybody accepts Blue Cross Blue Shield. Like it's just a given. So eventually I narrowed it down even further to just show me Blue Cross Blue Shield plans. By the way, I don't think I said this yet, but none of the plans available through healthcare.gov are PPO plans, which is so frustrating. Like I would pay more to be on a PPO plan, but it's just not available. And I don't understand why. I don't know why health insurance is like this in the States, but yes, no PPO plans, everything was, HMO or some other, I don't know the other letters, but I do know PPO and I do know HMO. So like I was saying before, with a PPO plan, you can just go straight to a specialist. You don't need any sort of referral. You can call up whoever you need to go and make an appointment with them directly. If you have an HMO plan though, you have to go and visit a primary care doctor and be like, hey, I'm experiencing these GI issues and I know you can't help me. Can you refer me elsewhere? So it's like a, a waste of an appointment in my opinion, um, but then they're gonna refer you somewhere and then you can go and see that specialist without having to worry about insurance making a big deal about it. So I did choose an HMO plan through Blue Cross Blue Shield. I will pop up the information on the screen as I talk about it. I chose an Anthem Bronze Pathway X Guided Access HMO 7500 50% standard plan. In simple terms, this is a bronze plan through Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's an HMO plan, as I said, so I will have to go to a primary care doctor before I can go to see any of my specialist doctors, even though I've already been seeing them for years, so. Haven't done that yet. I'm actually, I am just postponing all of my doctor visits until next year because I already went and saw my doctors before switching plans. So if you're leaving your job anytime soon or you have just left your job and you still have coverage, get in all the doctor visits that you need to and then push everything out. <laughs> Altogether without the tax credit, this would have cost $433.71. So not super expensive, but also not super cheap in my opinion, but a decent amount. So after my $346 tax credit, I am paying $87.71 per month for just medical insurance. So this does not include dental or vision. There are some plans that offer dental coverage. None of the Blue Cross Blue Shield plans offered adult dental coverage, so that wasn't an option. I was a little bit bummed about that because that would have just been easier. Um, a lot of them offered child coverage for, for dental, and that was a part of the reason why I was going to go with Ambetter, but then I started realizing like, okay, the dentist that I go to doesn't accept Ambetter, or maybe they'll like it'll be tricky to get into a good doctor, you know? So um, that's why I still just went with Blue Cross and then I'll talk about dental in just a minute. Then we have my deductible. My deductible is $7,500, which is pretty high. And I was like, all right, it is what it is. I'm just gonna select this one. There were other options to, it would be like a lower monthly payment and then a higher deductible. So I think I saw a deductible as high as like 13,000 something dollars, but I was like, no, let me go with 
somewhere in between that. <laughs> there were also plans with lower deductibles, but the lowest I saw was maybe like a thousand something or 2000 something, but the monthly cost would have been before the tax credit, like over $600, over $700. So I'm like, there's no point in doing that because that's just, that's too much on a monthly basis. So I went with this one. I have over 7,500 in savings. If I absolutely needed to go to the doctor for something and it costs more money than I was expecting, I would be able to cover it based off of this deductible, you know? They also break down how much you're going to pay per visit. And this was another thing that I paid attention to when selecting a plan because some of them were saying like, oh, you'll pay 20% of after coinsurance or something. It was very confusing. Anything with percentages, I was like, no, I don't want that because I don't know exactly what that means they're gonna be able to finagle things and make me pay more money. So I want a plan that is going to tell me exactly what I'm gonna be paying for each type of visit. So I also made my decision based off of that. So if I go to a primary care doctor, which I will have to at some point, I don't, I'm gonna wait as long as I can, um, but in order for me to go to my specialist doctors, I have to go to a primary care physician. Uh, that is $50 per visit. Specialist doctor is $100 per visit. Urgent care, $75. Emergency room is 50% coinsurance after the deductible. See, I don't know what that means exactly. And <laughs> it's like, hopefully I don't have to go to the emergency room, but obviously we can't always plan those things out. Outpatient mental health, $50 per visit from day one. I don't expect that. Generic drugs, $25. I'm not too concerned about other prescription drugs. It was really just I'm on a specialty medication. So like I was saying before, I just made sure there was a green check mark next to Humira or Hiramaz. Then once you select your medical coverage, you can go to dental and vision next. So I did do dental insurance through healthcare.gov. I got, this was much simpler to choose from, like there weren't as many options and it was kind of just basic straight to the point. Also, this is much cheaper. Ultimately, I went with a Delta Dental plan, which I know the, the dentist that I currently go to takes Delta Dental. Most of them do, at least here in Georgia. I am paying $11.57 per month. I don't think I have to pay anything for cleaning, so two cleanings per year. And then I, obviously if I had to get like a root canal or filling, that's gonna be a little bit more costly, but hopefully I can just prevent that, do my best to prevent that. And then I did not get vision insurance because I don't really go to the eye doctor too frequently. If I do go at this point, it's like every two to three years. I actually had PRK surgery a while back, so my vision is like basically perfect. And now I just go to like check that everything's okay every couple of years, but I don't need glasses, I don't need contacts, so for now, I'm not gonna get vision insurance. Like I said before, for 2024, I'm just trying to avoid the doctor for the rest of the year. I have already seen my GI, I've seen my colorectal surgeon, I've already gone to like my OBGYN, so all of that's already taken care of for the year and for the rest of the year, I'm just gonna hopefully not see any doctors, not pay any copays, and then come 2025, I will, I'll see if I'm gonna keep the same plan or switch plans, I'm not really sure yet. I'll, I'll decide during open enrollment. But come 2025, I will go to a primary care doctor. I actually don't have one right now, but then I will get my referrals that I need to and go and make appointments with my specialist doctors. Now, as far as my medication goes, I'm pretty sure I'm good, but honestly, things have been like weird with it. So first of all, in, I had my old insurance through my employer through the end of May, so I didn't have to worry about it in May. But then in June, I was on this new health insurance. I placed an order for my medication. They send me two injections per month, so it was time for me to submit for that to be ordered. And at first it was like, okay, you have a copay. Your, your copay changed and it's gonna be $100 in order for us to ship this. So I was like, okay, let me call. There's like a savings card that you get with Humira or any of these biosimilars as well. So they will cover up to a certain amount. Um, so it's like 5,000 per year that Hiramaz themselves will pay for the medication if I have to have like any copays. So I called them or I called CVS, I don't know who I called, but I had it worked out to where I was like, hey, can you apply the savings card? I don't wanna have to pay the $100 if I don't have to. They applied the savings card and I got my medication. They sent it to me and I didn't pay anything as it's always been. But then the other day, it was time to refill again for July and I did that, I submitted everything. And just the other day, I got a text message that was like, hey, your medication needs prior authorization. So we're gonna work with your doctors and your pharmacy and we will keep you posted. So I don't know why that didn't happen in June. 
Um, but I let my doctor know back in June that my, my insurance was actually, I let my doctor know back in May that things were changing and nothing came up. And then now it seems like they're handling it in the back end. I am pretty positive that things will work out because this is a biosimilar. It's not actual Humira. I could see them trying to push me away from Humira if I was still on that and go to a biosimilar, but I'm glad that I already switched to the biosimilar. So as far as that goes, I'm just trusting the process and waiting to see what happens. But luckily I have quite a few of my medications like stocked up. I think I have a good um, two months or so of medication. So that's why I'm not like stressing about it. Oh, and something I should add here is that this is something that's happened anytime that my insurance has changed. Like a prior authorization always comes up. So when I switched from my previous, like my job two jobs ago, to my most recent job, they had me do a prior authorization as well. So when I first started the medication, I had to get prior prior authorization and then switching, I switching jobs, I had to get prior authorization. I guess the reason insurance companies do this is because there are like cheaper options that you can, like my doctor is telling me, okay, you gotta go on Humira, you know? Uh, but the insurance is like, no, how about we try steroids first or try this first, it's so, it's very frustrating. But since I've been on the medication for several years, it's now easier for that prior authorization to just be approved, like for the authorization to go through because my doctor can be like, she needs to be on this medication because she's been on it for X amount of years and she has gone into remission and if she goes off of this, then blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know, they handle it on their end. So just wanted to add that because I think this is pretty normal for that to happen with insurance changes, but I don't know why it was fine for June and then it changed in July. But if a copay does end up coming up, I'll see again if my savings card can cover that. If I have to pay like a hundred per month or a little bit each month, I, I really don't want to. I want it to continue to be zero dollars or five dollars like I was paying before but if I absolutely had to pay it in order for me to stay on this medication I would pay a little bit. I will keep y'all posted. But I think that's everything. I feel like this video was really long much longer than I was expecting it to be so I apologize for being kind of chatty but I wanted to cover all of the aspects of this because with my situation it was a little bit different compared to other people who don't have an autoimmune disease or something where they have to see doctors and have certain medications on a monthly basis. So hopefully this was helpful if you are in a situation and health situation similar to myself. Let me know if y'all have any questions. I will try my best to answer. But otherwise, thank y'all so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one.